Hi everyone. Today I would like to give a brief introduction about the LDPV family like this LDPV 5100. They are all nanosecond short pulse drivers. All our drivers are protected by a seal, so make sure that there is a seal and remove it. The next step is take out your driver and unwrap it. You can see several screws and the three bolts we can use to attach the digital control interface on top of this driver. You see the blue potentiometer to adjust the output current, the 10 pin header, the input SMC socket and the current monitoring SMC output socket on the right hand side. The three connectors please do not use. On the right hand side of the driver there is a connection for the laser diode. You can mount it either horizontally or vertically. The easiest way to control the LDPV series is to use a digital control board PLCS21. Once again, remove the seal, take out your driver out of the box and unwrap it. You now can see the part number label mentioning PLCS21. On the left hand side, the power supply screw terminals, the USB interface, the trigger output SMC socket and the galvanically isolated triggering input. On the right hand side you see the connector for the human interface PLB21. On the bottom side you see the connectors which fit directly on top of the LDPV series. Now we can use the kit which uh, is providing you a power supply and all the cables. So once again remove the seal, unpack all the devices so we now take out the cables, the SMC to BNC cables and the wall plug adapter. So first step is checking whether the wall plug adapter is the correct one. If you received it together in a bundle, then uh, it's obviously the, the correct part. Take the SMC to BNC connectors, connect one end to a digital oscilloscope and the other side to your LDPV driver at the current monitoring output terminal. Just tighten it a bit, not too tight, otherwise you will destroy the tiny socket and connect it to an oscilloscope. Make sure that you terminate the input with 50 ohms, otherwise the signals are disturbed. Plug the PLCS21 directly on top of your driver and use the three screws. I now don't do it to save some time for the presentation. Use the power supply cables. The black negative is the top one and the red positive one is the lower one. Make sure that you provide 15 volts only if you use the PLCS21. The LDPV series can run with up to 24 volts. Now we are using the human interface, it's the PLB21. Once again, remove the seal, take out your device, unwrap it and then we will connect it to the driver board. But first of all, we need to attach these small mounting pots, which are giving you a much better view of angle to the display. So just slide them in on both sides, left and right, like this. And now we're using the shipped cable. It's a spe special cable between the RS232 standard connector and the 10 volt pin header, which directly fits on top of the digital control board PLCS21. Make sure to connect it with the correct polarity. There's one blocked pin. Make sure that you do not use any force, but press it slightly on top and attach it. Okay, here we are. 
Next step, make a shot at the output, like mentioned in the manual. This is allowed with these drivers. We use a short piece of solder wick and anything to clamp it, to fix it, like this lab probe. Just make the shot. And now we can power up. Just plug in the wall plug adapter and you see that the display is um, starting up. It asks you to download a new driver. So if it's the first time you connect these units together, you have to press yes. The second time it won't ask you again. And all the information which is stored into the PLCS21 is now transported to the PLB. So it won't take too long, but we have to wait a few seconds. And once the driver information are downloaded, we can use uh, the menu to control all the settings within the allowed parameters. Here we are. Now the upper menu is the pulse duration and the next one is uh, the pulse repetition frequency and the lowest one in the uncalibrated mode uh, is giving you direct access to the level of the output current but please make sure that you observe the output current on the oscilloscope now we can start laser emission and if the green LED is lighting you can Still adjust all the parameters, but the laser emission is started. And now you can see on the oscilloscope the pulse provided by your driver. Here we are. You see that you can vary the amplitude, so the current level and the pulse duration separately starting from the shortest pulse to the longest allowed pulse and within all the parameters. You see the rising edge, that's this one, and the plateau, and the falling edge with some measurement artifacts. Uh, so these ringing and noise will not do any harm to your laser diode. You see an ultra short fall time and a very stable plateau. This is because we have connected the short instead of the laser dart directly to our driver. In normal operating conditions you have some sort of impedance between the driver and uh, the laser diode. So always make sure that you connect the laser diode as close as possible to the driver like shown in this final presentation.